All right, Shalom. Um, <clears throat> first and foremost, I want to begin by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Rawr Chakwadash. Double unto the old apostles and bishops, the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations. Until all for we like tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the earth. Now, in this lesson, I just want to focus on this aspect of the new covenant in which when we finally enter into the new covenant, our nature is what will be changed. You know, this corruptible nature that we have now where, you know, we still are prone to um, temptation, evil thoughts. Because uh, does it not say in um, Matthew as well as in Mark, basically in the Gospels when Yahweh Shai was telling those uh, wicked scribes and Pharisees that it's not what um enter into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of a man, and what comes what comes out of the man comes from the heart, the mind. And he proceeded to list all the different things, you know, adulteries, fornication, uh, the evil eye, you know, murders, you know, etc. It all starts in the mind, and um. That's the nature that we're going to continue to have as long as we're in this corruptible flesh. All right. Um, the flesh, it, it, it presses down upon the mind. And like it tells us in Galatians, uh, Paul, um, he broke down the dynamic of the battle between the spirit and the flesh. You know, it's like a tug of war that goes on between your mind and and. and you know, the flesh, you know, they're always worn with each other. You know, your members worn with your spirit. The Lord is going to destroy that dynamic. All right. And take, take away that corruptible nature. All right. Basically when we're changed and that's how you're going to know we've entered into the new covenant, because according to the new covenant, the Lord is going to program us with his law, statutes and judgments. That's what it means by writing it into our inward parts. We're going to be programmed into it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to read this uh, one in uh, Ezekiel the 36th chapter, which I did read it in my uh, other lesson that I did uh, concerning this topic. But I just want to, you know, read it again to just to further elaborate on how our nature is what's going to be changed. Okay. And we don't have to, we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, dealing with what comes with that nature, which is basically sin. Okay. We get, we, we, we receive infirmities because of sin. All right. We die because of sin. All right. We suffer uh, punishments because of sin. We're no longer going to go through that in a new covenant. So this is uh, starting at Ezekiel 36 and 24. It says, for I will take you, I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries. All right. Like uh, Yahweh Shai said, uh, going into uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, how he's going to uh, gather the elect from the four corners of the earth, you know, by, by the angels. So we're going to be gathered physically up out of here. You know, the bulk of us here in Babylon, you know, Lord willing, we have that number. We're going to be beamed up into the uh, the cloud, the ship. And, and simultaneously is when we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Right. It says, and I will bring you to your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. Which, you know, the process of that started now by us, you know, waking up to the truth. You know, the scriptures say in Psalms. Uh, you know, 119, you know, how shall a man uh, cleanse his own way by taking heed thereto un uh, according to the word? You know, um, we're clean, um, you know, we're washed, you know, by the word. Okay. So it says, <clears throat> so we've been clean in that sense, but the Lord's going to fully clean us up when he get us out of these vile bodies. Or when he have, uh, got, you know, gathered us, we will have already shed these vile bodies. So we're going to be clean from that as well. It says, from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. 
right? A new heart, meaning a new mind also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. So, you know, this is where our nature is going to be changed because in these bodies, in this flesh, we're automatically given to evil. Let's go to Sirach 17. I'm, I'm bringing out some of the same precepts I brought out in my other lesson, but it all flows together. Uh, Sirach 17 and 16 it says, Every man from his youth is given to evil. Neither could they make to themselves fleshly, fleshy hearts for stony. And um, I'm going to give examples to that in the scriptures because one of the arguments uh, being made for why we are in a new covenant, you know, according to certain people, you know, Captain Zaryak, which we didn't know until, you know, recent that they teach that we're in a new covenant. Um, they'll use the argument of, you know, the fact that we meditate on the scriptures, you know, and, you know, us not being a part of this world, you know, we become a new creature in Yahawashai, so we're not the same person that we used to be. Um, that's true. All right. Um, we do partially uh, have that attitude where, you know, we just like our, our mind is focused on serving the Lord. But being in this flesh, we do have slip ups. We're still prone to go off. We still get evil thoughts that we have to constantly fight. You know, the scriptures say even um, the uh, uh, the thought of foolishness is sin. So, you know, as long as we're in these bodies, that's what we're subject to. All right. So the Lord's going to have to take away the, 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 the corruptible nature that we have. And that's what's going to make us uh, perfected. Right now, we're not we're not perfected. The covenant that the Lord made is perfect. All right. Matter of fact, let me um let me go here real quick. It is a. Uh, Hebrews 8 and verse uh, 6, and it says, But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, right? Which was, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second, right? Right? And it wasn't that the, the, the covenant wasn't good. It was just we wasn't perfected. We were the ones that wasn't good. So we couldn't hold it due to our nature. It says for finding fault with them, the them is talking about Israel. He said, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continue not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For well, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. All right. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me. This isn't talking about just a select few or a remnant or those at a uh, ISU PK, you know, because here it is, we're in a new covenant, but you represent the uh, ISU PK that says, if it's not of the commanding uh, general, if it's basically, if you're not in the, uh, the UPK, then uh, you're not of the Mosai and you don't have the truth. So that means that 
the the covenant is only uh, limited to the ISUPK. So the Lord only made a covenant with the ISUPK. Them the only Israelites that entered into the covenant. Everybody else, they don't have the truth. They don't know the Lord like, like they know the Lord. Come on, man. Stop it. This is for all of Israel. All right. He said, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that's why <clears throat> going back here, he's going to have no, he, he's, he's, of course, he's not going to um, remember our iniquities anymore because we're going to be changed to keep the whole law. We're not going to sin. So he ain't going to worry about us sinning again. So why even focus on what you did in the past? When you're changed now, from here on out, you're gonna you, Israel is gonna be serving them. All right, they they they're gonna be programmed in the law to 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 be righteous. Right now, Israel is at their worst. They they Israel have never been this wicked in in, in their history. In the history of Israel is existence. Israel has never been as wicked. All right. You got LGBTQ Israelites out there. You got Israelites that still uh, gangbang. You know what I mean? That know that they Israel. You got uh, uh, guys in Israel. That's uh, taking men's uh, wives from them. And even taking their daughters and, 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 and selling other men's daughters for the dowry. So it's a lot of evil and wickedness in Israel. How, how could we be under the new covenant? Jake still have that stony heart. They're still stubborn. They still have that evil nature inside of them. That's what's going to be changed when we enter into this uh, covenant. That's why he says in the next verse, it says, and I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. And then let me jump down real quick. To verse uh, 31, it says, then shall you remember your own evil ways. Right. This is what this is, you know, what you were. This was your nature. All right. Before the Lord, uh, you know, changed you and cleaned you up. All right, then shall you remember, but the Lord's not going to remember. You know, after a while, it's going to be a thing of the past. That's why in Revelation, it says all things are going to be uh, new. It says in your in your doings that were not good and you and shall love yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. All right. So. <clears throat> Let's go to Revelation. The 20 um the 22nd chapter. Cuz those the law statutes and, and and judgments that he's going to write into us that he's going to write into our spirit that's basically the uh the tree of life. All right? And <clears throat> after we've already experienced both the good and the evil, we experience both sides. That's what's going to separate us. That's why we're going to be able to be as gods on the earth and, 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 and judge. OK. And that was one of the, that was the, the, the one of the only things that the serpent <laughs> was right about when he told uh, Eve that you should be as a uh, God's knowing both good and evil. All right. So this is our uh, revelation 22 and us uh, starting at one. It says, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of the most High and of the lamb. All right. This is uh, basically in, 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 when we get in the kingdom, right? <clears throat> basically the, uh, the wisdom is going to be in us. And we're not going to be prone to sin anymore. Basically, the light is going to be with us and we're going to be the light to the other nations. We're going to show them the way to, uh, you know, 
life. Because right now, this is not uh, life. Worshiping idols, that's, that's, that's vanity. That's not life. You know, you got people that uh, have the concept of worshiping the damn dead. When the most high is the, is, is the God of the living. So we're going to have to show the world how to truly worship the Father, man. And his only begotten son. Because Yahweh Shai is going to be worshipped, all right, as well. It says, <clears throat> in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing, you know, basically the uh, medicine of the nations. And, um, you know, starting with us, you know, we had to be healed, you know, through this uh, wisdom. So we're going to be, you know, a part of that, that, that tree. All right. It says, and there shall be no more curse. Because the curse is going to be lifted upon our salvation. Okay, when we're when we're changed, all right, and um, the Lord's going to give us the power and we're going to subdue the nations, the curses will be lifted off of us. We will no longer be in captivity. And we also will not be subject to that sinful nature. All right. No more curse, but the throne of the most sign of the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him. So <clears throat> let's go to the previous chapter. Because when it says there shall be no more curse, this is what it's going into. Revelation 21 and uh, one, it says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Where the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. All right, Esau's kingdom gets destroyed. All right, the, uh, his his world passes away with with the thermonuclear destruction, as well as a uh, fire from the chariots. And there was no more sea, meaning all the nations, their dominion was 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 done. They had no more authority or power in the earth after Yahushai came back and uh, laid the smackdown. It says, and I and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. So this is uh, uh, the new and improved, upgraded Jerusalem. All right, basically the hundred forty-four thousand and the one third. Um, they will have put put on um, the immortal and put off uh, the mortal. They would have uh, put on corruption. It's like an incorruption. All right. And um, they will not uh, be weary. They will not have uh, fainted. They'll have that glow. So this is what uh, John saw. All right. Israelites that were transformed. Uh, All right. Like you read in, uh, was that uh, Philippians? Where it talks about that change. Let me go to... Uh, Philippians 3. Philippians 3, and I'm going to start at 20. It says, for our conversation is in heaven, from, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. So, you know, once we um, change, we're going to have the power that Yahweh Shai have. We will be able to subdue all things. All right. Um, we're going to be like basically celestial, uh, extraterrestrial super soldiers. All right. Fashion in likeness of uh, Yahweh Shai. So the world ain't going to be able to um, deal with us. We're going to have all the power. So <clears throat> let's go here real quick. Because it says according to the working, right? You go to uh, the word working, the, uh, the, the Greek word is uh, inner Gaia. And it says efficiency, energy, operation, 
strong. And then it says down here, working efficiency in a New Testament use only of superhuman power, whether of the Mosai or of the devil. Uh, we know that uh, Esau on the left hand side with his uh, transhumanist agenda, his fourth industrial revolution, you know, he's trying to make man into, you know, superhumans through his technology, but that's going to fail. All right, but um, the Lord's going to give his his actual people, starting with the elect, he's going to give them, you know, super superpower, superhuman uh, strength. The Lord said, you're going to be able to do things that you see me do and even greater. So that will have already taken place by the time of um, the fulfillment of this vision here. All right. New Jerusalem coming down from the Most High out of heaven. So they already went into the cloud. All right. And, and was joined with Yahweh Shai. So this is them coming back down. It says prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Going back to the covenant. All right, how the Lord said that he's going to basically um, be with us. As a matter of fact, let's go to um, the one in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31 and 31, it says, uh, verse, I'm going to read verse um, 33, says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, that I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. All right. So it says, it says it here back in uh, verse three, it says, and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So understand what's taking place here, right? Because we always we're going to have his name, you know, written written in us as well, the name of the Father and the Son. It says, "And the Most High God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death." Why? Because death was swallowed up in victory. Because we will have already put on the the incorruptible, the immortality. Right. Neither sorrow, which is a part of the curse. Deuteronomy uh, 28 uh, was at around the uh, 62nd, 61st, 62nd verse. And we would have the sorrow of the mind. You know, we would have, um, you know, no ease. We would have the uh, no assurance of our life. Well, there shall be no more death, neither sorrow. Right. No more uh, pain, no more sickness, infirmities that we're subject to now in these uh, corruptible uh, bodies, the, the, the sinful flesh. Nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Why? Because we're now in the new covenant now. Our nature have changed. We're no longer subject to that anymore. And he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. Now you've entered into the new covenant. And he said unto me, right, for these words are true and faithful. Now, um, I want to go back to uh, Re Revelation, the 22nd chapter. Because as we are no longer under the curse, we now have the tree of life, Right? So let's go to a couple of precepts showing you that having these new bodies and having the tree of life is connected. So this is uh second Ezra's two. And um so like here, this is uh where where am I? I'm in Sirach 17. So uh let's go to um Second Ezra's two. And starting at the 10th verse. And it says, Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, Tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take unto me, and give these the everlasting tabernacles, which I have prepared for them. And what is those everlasting tabernacles? 
That's these new bodies. Bodies that's not going to uh, decay. They're not going to be subject to corruption. All right? These are everlasting bodies that we're going to have. Okay? Which I have prepared for them. The Lord said, I go to prepare a place for you. So we got these bodies uh, uh, waiting on us. It says, they shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Basically, um, you know, no more, no more suffering of the curse. You know, where we have to, you know, uh, labor and, 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 and produce, you know, and the other nations, they, they uh, eat of our labors. It says that in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, that we shall rest from our hard uh, uh, labors, our hard bondage, wherein we were made to uh, serve. It says, nor be weary. And th on this side, man, the, the, the saints are getting weared out. It says that in, da uh, in Daniel, that they shall wear out the saints of the Most High. We're not going to be weary after this. Hell, the angels, do the angels ever get weary? No. It, it, they don't get weary. It says, go and you shall receive, pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. In other words, you know, hasten the coming of the dead of the Lord. You know, and, and that's what we long for. We can't wait for that day. Because it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth where dwells righteousness. That's going to be the standard. All right. And our nature is going to reflect that. Because we're no longer going to be sinful like we are now, which is why we need to be under grace. If we didn't have this uh, nature about us right now, we'd be in the kingdom. It says the kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. So as I read in uh, verse uh, 11 and 12, it talks about giving us these everlasting tabernacles. And having the tree of life. And that's what's going to uh, keep us immortal. Now let's go from there to. Um, let's go to. Sirach the 19th chapter. And the 19th verse and it says. <clears throat> the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You see that? And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. So going back to Revelation 22. It talks about the tree having a tree of life. All right. Full of uh, ointment. Right. And then also the next verse, it says, and there shall be no more curse because these commandments of the Lord, which is the doctrine of life, is going to be in us. We're not immortal right now. We're, 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 we're prone to, to, to sin and, and, and we're subject to death. Until the Lord uh, comes back and change us, we're still subject to death. We still have to anticipate dying, going back to the spiritual realm. So when the Lord change our nature and, uh, and, and give us the tree of life and change our bodies, that's when you're going to know we're in the new covenant. All right. But right now we still have that evil impulse. Now, let me uh, uh, show an example of how the law was in righteous men's mind. They was always meditating and pondering on the law. Right. Because, uh, you know, they'll try to use the example of uh, Paul when he said, uh, you know, being a Jew inwardly and, and, and not one uh, outwardly, right? You know, matter of fact, let me go to it. Let's go to Romans uh, 2 where he at, where uh, Captain Desaria quotes that. Uh, Revelation 2 and uh, 28, it says, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, 
in the spirit and not, a, and not in the latter, whose praise is not of men, but of the most high. Right? But this is the same Paul that also says this. Romans 7. And um, I'm going to read the last couple of verses. Yeah, Revelation 7 and uh, 22. And it says, I'll start at 21. It says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the Messiah after the inward man. This is what Paul said after he said that. Delighting in the law of the Messiah after the inward man, meaning I'm going to meditate. I'm going to, with the best of my ability, walk in these statutes. But knowing the nature that we have currently, I'm not going to be perfect. Right? Because then he goes on to explain. But I see another law in my members warned against the law of my mind. This is what we, this is the nature that we still currently have. We've inherited inherited this nature since the garden. All right. Your your members are talking about your flesh. Warned against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity, the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank the Most High through Yahweh Shai and Mashiach, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of the Most High. Let, 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 let me read that again. And I'm going to read it a little slower. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of the Most High. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Now let's get a, a, a scriptural uh, example of that. Let's use King David. King David, he was a man after the Most High's heart, right? And um, when you read throughout his psalms, a lot of it is dealing with meditating on the law of the Most High. <clears throat> and you read all these different psalms, right? And he constantly reminded himself to the Lord that he would meditate in the Lord's precepts, right? To stay close to the Heavenly Father. Uh, Psalm 77 and, tw and 12, it says, I will meditate also of all thy work and talk of all thy doings. You know, dealing with the Lord's, uh, you know, his miraculous ways, his righteous uh, judgments. Uh, Psalms 119 and 15, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Right? Um, Psalms 119 and 48, my hands also will I lift up unto my commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate in thy statutes. So you see throughout the Psalms, he's talking about meditating on the law. So the law was actually in King David's mind, in, in his heart. Well, that's proof that, you know, he knew about the new covenant and he he entered into the new covenant before. No, nah, don't 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 start making up and, and winging it. So you can see an example that even King David. All right. He he, he served the, uh, the Lord in his mind. But because of that, due to that nature. Uh, of being in uh, that sinful flesh, you know, having that corruptible, evil nature, he still was subject to sin. He still went off. He he caused the man to be put to death. That was like murder, so he could take his woman. Then it became the act of adultery, because he meditated on that woman. He he it was it's like he premeditated on getting with that woman. The lust of the, uh, of the eyes captured him in that, in, in that moment when he looked down and he saw Bathsheba, who was the wife of another man. All right. So he was still subject to that nature, even though his, his mind was on the law. He had his mind on the law. He was he was he was still being a Jew inwardly. 
but he succumbed to the flesh. All right. He 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 uh, had Israel numbered. That was another uh, uh, sin that he committed. You're going to tell me that this same King David is not a man of the Lord. His mind was was constantly on on the Lord's precepts, the statutes, his judgments, and 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 he had everything in order, and, and <laughs> you know, until he did what he did, and even still, even after that, the Lord showed him mercy. He showed him mercy by not putting him to death, like usual, under their first covenant. Usually, you would have got put in the, put to death, but he didn't. Because he, he he received that grace that we're being shown now, while we're not in the old under the old or the new in the uh, new covenant yet. We're under the sure mercies of David. That's the covenant of grace that we're currently under. So while we're under this grace, we meditate in the law. That's why we keep uh, these uh, high holy days. That's why we rehearse the righteous acts. You know. That's why we, you know. Uh, you know, we meditate. This is why we know not to commit adultery, not to, uh, you know, commit murder. All right, but the law was just our schoolmaster to bring us to Yahweh Shai. So we have Yahweh Shai. We try to walk as closest to him. But that don't mean that we're going to slip. That's why Yahweh Shai is, is in the heavens praying on our behalf. He, we, we have an advocate. All right. He's our intercessor. So if we're of the elect, he's going to pray that the Lord, you know, forgives us. You know, don't 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 uh, attribute their iniquities to them. All right. So this is another example. And now let's go to the Apocrypha. This is a scripture I always go to dealing with this topic. When you go over to the second edge of the third chapter. <clears throat> It's uh this is our second address uh three and I'm gonna start at verse um Yeah, we'll start with Abraham, but I'm gonna read down. It says uh starting at verse thirteen, it says, Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose thee a man from among them whose name was Adam, him thou lovest, and unto him only thou shootest thy will, and madest an everlasting covenant with them, promising him that thou wouldest never forsake his seed, which is why the Lord made that that, that agreement. Uh, we'll never, the, the Lord will never uh, cast away his people, even when he was angry with us. He never did away with us as a, as a nation. The covenant it still stands. That's why the Lord died. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac also thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee and put by Esau. And so Jacob became a great multitude. And it came to pass that when thou leadest his seed out of Egypt, thou broughtest them up to the Mount Sinai, and bowing the heavens, thou didst set fast the earth. Movest the whole world and madest the depth to tremble and tr troublest the men of that age. And thy glory went through four gates of fire and of earthquake and of wind and of cold, that thou mightest give the law unto the seed of Jacob and diligence unto the generation of Israel. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, <laughs> that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. This is that stony heart. This is that evil nature, that corruptible nature that we still have. Right? The first, for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. That's why it also says here. Let's go to. um. Second Ezra, uh, the seventh chapter. And this was uh, Ezra making this complaint after he learned about all this. Uh, second Ezra 7. And. Um, <clears throat> I 
verse, uh, I'll start at verse 40. Mm. I'll start at verse 41. It says, even so now seeing corruption is grown up and wickedness increased. And that started since uh, Adam going off and transgressing and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly. Wherefore shall it not be so now also? He answered me and said, and this is uh, the angel, this, pr this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the weak, but the day of doom shall be the end of this time, basically when the Lord comes back. Second Peter, the third chapter. All right. Which they count uh, uh, that day slackness. But the day of doom shall be the end of this time. When, that, when this nature of ours it gets changed, it's going to happen on this particular day. All that is going to pass away. This is how he's going to make all things new. All right. <clears throat> but the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for to come. Wherein corruption is past. First Corinthians 15. All right. When Yahweh come with the angels and, 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 they, and they blow that, that, that sound of a trumpet and the dead in Yahweh rising first. And those that being alive, being caught together in the air with them. That's all going to happen all on the same day. Intemperance is at an end. Infidelity is cut off. Righteousness is grown. All Israel is going to be righteous at, at this point. And truth is sprung up. Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that have gotten the victory. I answered then and said, this is my first and last saying. That it had been better to not have given the earth unto Adam or else when it was given him to have restrained him from sinning. For what profit is it now for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and after uh, death to look for punishment? You know, this cycle of, you know, coming down in the flesh. You inherit and in, uh, basically having that uh, inherently evil nature about yourself so you're going to be prone to sin and the ways of sin is death so we looking for punishment we're going to you know basically some form of judgment is going to come upon you it's like that cycle <laughs> he, he's questioning you know what profit is this if this is what's going to be the continual cycle but the angel had to basically further elaborate all right that basically we had to go through this for a purpose but what we're going to have afterwards, all right, what we have promised to us afterwards is going to be, is, is going to be far glorious. Or like it says in Romans, um, was it the Romans, the eighth, the, cha the eighth chapter about how um, the glory is not going to be compared. Romans uh, 8. In 18, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Because we're going to be transformed. Okay? We're going to be delivered from the bondage of corruption into that, 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 that the sons of the Most High. All right? So going back, he said, um, verse 48, it says, O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For thou it was... Thou for though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us in immortal time, whereas we have done the works that bring death? So he was trying to get, you know, understanding of this. But little did he know that that's what the new covenant is about. All right. When we enter into, you know, uh, you know, everlasting life. You know? So, uh, let's, let's, going back, where was I at? Yeah, over here it says, going back, it says, verse 21, it says, For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome, and so be all they that are born of him. And that's why Yahweh Shai, his, his sacrifice, <coughs> um, is what uh what is what certified that we're gonna be changed and we're no longer have to suffer up under the nature of Adam, the first Adam. 
what the Lord did was basically, I'm going to verify that you're going to be changed from up under that. All right. So the Lord, he, the wrong that he did as Adam, he, he, he corrected it. it. Basically what was done is now going to be undone. Okay. It says, thus infirmity was made permanent and the law also in the heart of the people with the malignity of the root so that the good departed away and the evil abode still. So the law was going to, you know, still be in our mind. We would still be able to uh, uh, do the things contained in the law. Understand that certain things are are, are wrong and, and, you know, the do's and don'ts, but having this nature, your, your, your body have you still going off when you mean to do good. So that's that malignity of the root. When you read it in the GNT, it actually words it as uh, evil impulse. And that's all attached to the nature of this uh, sinful flesh that we're in. All right. Verse 23 says, so the times passed away and the years were brought to the end to an end. Then thou didst raise up, raise thee up a servant called David. Whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name and to offer incense and oblations <coughs> unto thee therein. When this was done many years, then they that inhabited the city forsook thee. And in all things did even as Adam and all his generations had done, for they also had a wicked heart. And, and you know, it started, you know, because David, he was a man to the most high's heart. But there was some corruption there. So he also had that same nature, which is why he went off. Though he was constantly meditating in the law. All right. He, he was he was delighting in the Lord after the inward man, like Paul was saying. Same dynamic. He was he David was battling just as Apostle Paul was battling. And he had to tell those Israelite foreigners. They don't don't try to uh, burden yourself with being slaves to the law, knowing our nature, you know, it 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 it, it contradicts, you know, what's in the in, in the contract. Right now, you need to get right, and it starts by being under this grace, and now using this li uh, liberty as an occasion to the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We basically perfect your faith. You know, go through the sufferings, you know, learn patience in that aspect, you know, developing yourself, becoming. And that's how we're becoming new creatures in Yahweh Shai, you know, uh, uh, having in integrity, growing in, in character and in the knowledge. That aspect of it is what the Lord is requiring right now. And to our change, when we become fully perfect. All right. So <clears throat> I just want to touch on this, you know, so now you understand. So when we finally come into the covenant, the Lord's going to take away that stony heart, that, that evil nature. So we're going to be perfect. That's why we're going to live forever. That's why we're going to be immortal. We're going to have the tree of, uh, uh, of life that's going to bring us into immortality. All right. So, you know, Lord willing, this was uh, edifying, and I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Shai, and until the next one, Shalom.